This video explains how to use the CAD toolbar to create feature coded line work. Using the CAD toolbar, lines can be drawn between points with codes defined as line codes. You would use line codes to join up a sequence of points that define the edge of pavement, curbs, a building or a fence line. Control codes are used in conjunction with the line code to do things like start or end a line segment. The CAD toolbar is displayed in the map window and can be switched on or off from settings. There are two main modes, draw and measure. Draw is used to draw line work on points that are already in your job. Measure is used to create feature coded line work as you measure, and is the method most people use. Measure mode can be used in any of the measure points, measure topo forms, as well as in measure codes. In measure codes, a tap on the code button typically triggers the setting of the code as well as a measurement. For this reason, you always use the CAD toolbar to set the control code before you select the code button. The control code is usually only used once, so after a measurement the CAD button is unselected. In measure points, the CAD button adds the control code to the code field, and because control codes always follow the code, the code is always set first and then the CAD button is used to append the control code. Because the control code is usually only used once, the control code is removed from the code field after a measurement. Measure codes is easier and quicker to code with, so I'll demo using measure codes. For my first example, I'm going to measure a simple curve with a tangential arc in it. A tangential arc starts and ends tangential to the straight lines leading into and out of the arc. First I start the line. Tap the Start Join Sequence button and then BC. Move to the start of the arc. Tap the Start Tangential Arc button, then BC. Move along the arc and measure another BC. For small arcs this may not be necessary. It's up to you to decide how many points you want to use to define the arc. Move to the end of the arc. Tap the End Tangential Arc button and then to BC. Move along the next section of straight line and measure BC. We now have two straight sections of curb with a nice arc in the middle. If I have a random manhole I want to measure, then there are two control codes I can choose from to define it. Either three points on the edge of the circle or the centre point and one on the edge that defines the radius. I like to capture the centre point and reduce the number of steps, so I will use the latter method. Move to the centre of the sanitary sewer manhole cover. Tap Start Circle Centre and then SSL. Move to the edge of the manhole cover. Tap SSL. Now we have a nice circle drawn with a radius defined by the two measured points. I now have a rectangular stormwater grate I want to measure. There is one control code for creating rectangular line work, but two different ways it can be used. Either with three points where the first two define the corners of one side and the third anywhere on the opposite side defining the width, or with two points where they define the corners of one side as well as a distance that defines the width. If the control code is followed by distance, then the system assumes you are using the two points plus width method. My grates are typically a standard size, and I know the width so I will use the latter method. Move to the first corner of the grate. Tap the multi code button, tap SSL, then start rectangle and enter the width of the grate. We are using the multi code button because we need to enter the width of the grate. When using the multi code button, we are setting the code field directly, and the workflow requires you to pick the normal code before the control code. Move to the second corner, tap measure. Note that the control code and distance previously used were removed automatically for you. We now have a nice rectangle, drawn with the correct orientation and the width defined by the enter distance. I'm now going to measure the flow line of curb and gutter, and I'd also like to have line work for the top of curb, back of curb and edge of gutter, and I can define this using the offset control code. Move to the flow line of the gutter, tap offset, select the number of offsets you want to define and enter the offset distances. Tap FL to measure the first flow line point. Move to the next point and tap FL. After drawing the second point, the line work is drawn. The flow line are the three additional lines detailing the profile of the curb and gutter. Continue measuring the flow line until you are finished. To end the offsets, tap the offset button again. Note that the offset parameters are remembered for next time in case you want to use the same offsets again. The last CAD button I like to demonstrate is Join to Named Point. This is something you might use where fences might intersect. To the right you can see a portion of fence I have measured earlier. Now I am measuring a fence running north to south. Tap Start Join Sequence in WIRF to start the new fence line. 
Move to the next fence post defining the intersection of the fence lines and tap Join to Named Point. Then tap the fence post on the map previously measured to pick the point you want to draw an additional line to. Tap WIRF and you will now see two lines drawn. Move to the next fence post and measure again to continue on with the fence line. This has been a brief overview of a few of the 15 or so control codes available for controlling map line work. The new CAD toolbar makes drawing line work fast and easy and when using TBC you will see the same line work when your jobs are processed in the office, making the job to process the field data and produce plans significantly quicker and easier. For more information visit the Trimmel Access Help Portal. Thanks for watching.